Hello and welcome back. Oh no, we're not at the workshop. No, we're with Sailing Melody team. Hi. We've got Andy here. Melissa's behind the camera. Hello. Hello. And um, we thought, we, I thought we'd start this video here because we've got a job and it'll make more sense showing you here before we go back to the workshop. So this is the cutlass bearing housing and I've already made a plate to go onto here. This old flange is going to get cut off. But in order to put that on there, we need to line it up. And the only way to do that is with the cutlass bearing on to make sure it finds its, its place. And um, we've got the new cutlass bearing, but it doesn't fit, it's too tight. So we're going to have to turn that down in the lathe to fit there nicely. And then the next time we come back, we'll be able to fit it on. Yeah. So you're not it. used to not being on your own videos, are you? It's perfect. And you're going to make it. You're going to make it into two as well. Going to make yes. it still be a spare one, so we'll uh, we'll cut it down to length. So, join me uh, back at the workshop in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Nigel, an engineer with over 30 years' experience. Join me on my adventures as I build new, repair old, and restore beauty. This is Bleeding Rust. So, welcome back to the workshop. So this is the cutlass bearing housing off Sailing Melody's yacht. Um, it has a steel flange on the back here that's ready to weld onto the prop shaft tube that's on the yacht because the original um, flange, which is still on there, needs to be cut off, it is so badly corroded it needs replacing. Already made this and I've already cleaned up the cutlass bearing housing that was done previously. Unfortunately, I didn't film that. Now we've got the new cutlass bearing here it's a very nice one it's it's nice brass at housing on the outside nice and thick brass and the cutlass the rubber cutlass bearing on the inside the problem is it's too tight to fit for this housing now originally in this housing it had like a, a like a plastic coated um cutlass bearing in there now uh, this being a nice posh brass one we want it to be a tight fit but not so that you have to hammer it in and damage the end. Um, also, with this cutlass bearing housing, um, it doesn't need to be as tight a tolerance fit as your standard hammering ones, knocking ones, where you'd maybe put some Loctite in. Um, because this one has this clamping system at the top here. So once the cutlass bearing is in, the stainless steel bolt that goes through there tightens up, and that essentially shrinks the diameter of the the housing to clamp onto this outer uh, diameter of the colours bearing. It then also as a, a double feature, it has three grub screw, threaded grub screw holes so that you can put in anti-spin grub screws to stop the colours bearing spinning in the housing rather than the shaft spinning in the colours bearing. So it's quite a posh colours bearing housing, um, way over over engineered for um, for the size of bolt that it is, but that's not a bad thing. So let's get this over to the lathe. We'll square this off in the lathe and we'll just take a shim, very, very, um, oh God, probably a thousandth off each because it's, it's not far off. We'll take a thousandth off so it's a nice fit in here, not a, a tapping, not a knocking, if that makes sense. Um, and then this can go back to the bolt because the problem we've got at the minute is I can't weld this flange on until we've got the cutlass bearing inside the housing. The reason being is we need to slide it on the shaft so that this fits and sits where the cutlass bearing and shaft want it to be. Um, and then we can weld this onto the tube on the bolt. So let's get to the lathe and get that done. So I've got my brew with me. Lovely. And here we have the part. Now, I've already marked how much we actually need because there's enough in this to make two, so they'll have a spare on board, which is great. Um, so we're going to get this in the lathe and we're going to square it up so it's all running true. So what I'm going to do first, pop this in, tighten it, not fully tight, but fairly tight. Just move this out of the way. I need my bed. And I'm going to use my dial indicator to dial it in and get it straight. I've repositioned this so you can see on the dial a bit. Now that's set to zero at the minute. We don't want it going further than 
10 when we've done it. So if I spin this just by hand now, we were actually zero was on the hot, the high spot because the needle's going backwards. So it's zero was the high spot. So we, we're, we're a full half a dial out there. So what we want to do, or 50 thou, we're 50 thou out if that makes sense. So what we want to do is I'm going to reset zero to when it's at the high point there. Now zero is at the low spot, so it's going down, and then when it gets to the the low spot is zero because you can see the dial's going the other way now. So all I did was set it to its um, uh, lowest point and then reset the dial to zero using this adjustment screw up here. Um, so it makes it easier to work out which way you want to go. So this is the low spot, and this now is the high spot, and it's over. It's fifty-five thou out, so it goes from there all the way up to there if you can see that dial moving so what do we do so if that's the high spot that's where we need to tap it down now i haven't got a plastic hammer um i do but it's at my day job in my work in my toolbox so what i've done is i've took a ball pain hammer uh, and i've put some heavy duty um um gaffer tape or duct tape for my american friends um on the end of it that just stops it scratching and damaging the brass so just gently tapping that down you'll see this needle start to go back so i've took it halfway we'll now try that so now if you look it's going from 20 to 30 and that's 10 10 thou but i'd like to get it a little bit better so the 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 Low spot now is at 20. So I'm going to readjust this to zero. Oh, as close as I can get it. So we're back on zero. And now we should should have 10, just over 10 thou out. So what I'm going to do now is take it to its high spot again, which is just there. A very gentle tap. Try and take it back half of that. So we've gone back half of that, and now, well, we're within three thou there. That is more than good enough for what we want to do. We're in th within three thou. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tighten this up, and then we need to check again. Now, it's quite thick brassy, so I'm not worried about tightening it. Okay. So I spin it again and just check we haven't moved it. We haven't. We're still within three thou movement. So we can take the dial indicator off now that we know we're all good. That lives up there out of the way. Everything's good. I've got the right tool in my uh, in my tool bed. Make sure that's all tight. We're not going to get some chatter. Now this is sticking quite a way out, and I don't have a moving uh, um, base to steady that, a moving steady, um, which would normally be bolted on here, and it would just put a bit of back pressure on that. So when you when you're cutting, so I'm going to have to cut this very gently so that I'm not going to knock it out a square, and we'll do this very very carefully. But I'm only going to be taking a thou off, so we should be absolutely fine. So. Just spin that up and you'll be able to see just how close to perfectly lined up that is. There's no movement in that at all. So I've taken just a, a, a really light skim off there and I'm now going to just use some emery paper around it just to give that a polish because I'll also take, take a little bit off and then we'll give it a try and see how well it fits.
tooling out the way and see if we can if we've got enough room to try this in yeah just no that is still a very tight fit Using the art saw feed to get a smoother finish. The art saw feed on this mini lathe is it is too fast to be fair. Um, so I'm going to get some different gears for it, slow down the auto feed. If it was a slower auto feed, we'd get a much smoother finish, but it's not too bad, especially on good quality brass like this. Try that again. Oh, almost. Almost. One more, and we should be good. If you can see that on the camera, but I've got it on a good 10 mil and it's a quite good <laughs> tolerance for it. <sighs> Get that off. That is what we want. That'll be a nice tapping fit into there and then we'll let the clamp do the rest. So what I need to do now is cut this to the right length. Now it's 95 millimeters is what I need. So the first thing I need is my parting tool in the lathe which is here and then I need to measure from the inside edge this side of the parting tool so if you're looking at the parting tool i'm measuring from this side of the parting tool because the rest will be shavings and then you've got the other half this side of the parting tool to the end of the piece to get the exact length of the one i'm going to cut part way in then i'm going to chamfer i'm going to use my tool to put a nice chamfer on on this side and this side so that i don't have to put it back into the lathe le again later i'm going to part almost all the way through but because this rubber in the middle will be holding it together i'll then finish off with the hacksaw so get the tool close and then i need to measure you won't be able to see this but 95 mil to the end is there and now we're going to lock the bed off this little allen key does that and that was that now stops the bed from moving forwards and backwards and and make sure that it's consistent when we're cutting in So I've parted in, you can see there how much I've parted in. I've not gone all the way through, and now I need to get my chamfering tool and put a chamfer on. So 
Now I've got a chamfer on both sides of where I'm cutting through. That means I can cut off now and I've already got my chamfer on both ends. As you can see, this end's already got a chamfer on that came with it. So I need to put my cut, cut off tool back on. Finish cutting through, I have to be very careful because once I've gone through the brass, it'll only be the rubber holding it. Um, and so this could start to flop a bit. And um, once I've cut through the brass, and this is, this is now held with the rubber, I will then finish off with the hacksaw. I've put the backstop in just to catch it. If it should, it can only go so far then. Lining up with my original cut. Very gently. Quite scared of this. I'm not sure how it's going to react once we get through to the rubber. Yeah, and I'm, I'm too scared to go all the way through. I'll be honest with you with the <laughs> parting tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish off with the hacksaw. There the can't be much left to go through. I'll cut off, cut that off, and we will put this back in and dress that other end um, when it's back in the lathe. To get rid of the burr, the hacksaw is going to leave. So i just move that handle out of the way. Need just enough room to get in. <laughs> There we go. So how much did we have left? Oh, we were close. I'll show you on the camera. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. Can you see the bit where the just on the inside there, just that bit, we were almost through and into the rubber. So I will put that back in the lathe, just, it's actually not bad. But we'll just dress that up, we'll just dress this end up. So we dress that end up, oh that's all looking lovely. Little chamfer on the end to make it easier to put in. Okay. <laughs> that's ready to go into the housing. So there we are, all complete. Um, I've already put the colour sparing into the housing. As you can see, that looks lovely. Just needs the bolt for clamping it up and the grub screws in there to stop it from spinning. And that's good to go and go back on the yacht. So that's it. For this episode, thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. Please join me again in the workshop um, for another episode. I'll be posting episodes every single week. Until I see you again, take care.